with constipation, there are a couple different, you know, a couple different things that I really want to talk about because there are different forms of constipation. It's not just a matter of eat more fiber. It's not just a matter of drink more water. It's not just a matter of chew your food better. It's a matter of all of these things. Remember that your GI tract, from your mouth to your anus, is an organ whose job it is is to mechanically and to chemically break down food and then through the nervous system it's supposed to your nervous system is supposed to contract the muscles so that the food is propulsed through you and that we maintain an integrity of the GI barrier while we're absorbing nutrients from that food but also expelling the waste from the food or the expelling the things that could be potentially harmful so you know, one of the main elements is the mechanical element. So let's talk about, let's just break these down for you. Because if you understand the elements, then you'll understand where you may be potentially uh, taking a wrong turn and, and creating a constipatory effect. So number one is the mechanical breakdown of food. So what does that mean, mechanical breakdown? That means the physical tearing of the food. And the first mistake that many people make with constipation happens before the food ever even comes in their mouth. It has to do with what the food is. Some foods are harder to digest. And if you're eating foods that are hard to digest on a regular basis and your gut's compromised, that can create constipation. That When that food comes in you and it's hard to digest, it will sit there, it will not move, and it will constipate you. So it's what you pick to eat. Now, some of you, depending on where you're at in your journey of health, you may be struggling from gut problems. You may have a history of gut inflammation. You may have one of those uh, histories where you're gluten sensitive and you've got so much inflammatory damage to your gut that a lot of the processes here are broken and damaged and so all foods to a certain extent become hard to digest. And so when we have foods that are hard to digest, number one, we can reduce them. Well, what are the foods that can be harder to digest? Well, all forms of beans, seeds, these are, these are tough ones. Now, again, if you've read No Grain, No Pain, you're already gonna, you should already understand this mechanism. It's very, very challenging, very, very difficult to digest. We also want to put in the dairy group as challenging to digest. And then but on that, raw vegetables can be very hard to digest. And some of the meats, not all of them, but some of them particularly like your heavier hard to digest meats are more your red meat. So, you know, think of like your heavy beef, your heavy bison, that kind of thing. And I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about all meat, but I am talking in particular about red meats can be more difficult to digest. They're just harder to break down uh, for a gut mechanically because there's a lot more to chew. Okay, and so raw vegetables can be hard mechanically to break down because there's a lot of fiber to break through. And then of course your seeds, your, your beans, your, your grains, your dairy can be harder to digest as well. Now, all that being mechanical, what can we do? We can cook our raw foods better. So there's this, there's this um, you know, big movement going on right now about raw foods. Raw foods are better for you somehow than cooked foods. And the reality is, is that's not true at all. That, that can be true in certain instances, in certain cases where you might be able to get more of a nutrient out of a food when it's uncooked. Um, however, when it comes to digestion, raw vegetables can be very, very challenging to digest. Let me give you a few examples. Try eating raw broccoli on a gut that's mechanically uh, malfunctioning. Try eating a raw potato. Try eating a raw onion. Try eating raw garlic. These things can be very, very difficult to digest mechanically because they're so rich in plant fibers. Those plant fiber walls are very, very hard to break down. So you've got to keep that in mind. Don't, don't jump on the trend of, hey, everything raw is better because it's healthier because raw sounds better. No. This can be a very big problem. Same thing here with the meats. Again, not not all of it, but where people make the biggest mistake here is they oftentimes, and really with all these things, is they inhale their food. It's the speed at which they eat. But again, if so if you have a, a, a mechanical problem by eating foods that are already hard to mechanically break down, and then you eat them very, very quickly where you don't take the proper time to chew your food, um, that can again affect you mechanically and that can lead to a backup effect that can lead to a constipation effect. So it's important to consider what you're putting in first and second it's important to consider mechanically whether or not you're going through that process of chewing the food. And then if we, wanna, if we want to also put in another element here 
It's whether or not um, it's whether or not we we sit down to eat in a calm environment um, because. Again, what happens when you're amped up, when you're nervous, is it slows down, it slows down the mechanical movement of your GI tract. Part of what your GI tract moves on is a par what's called peristalsis, which is the nerves telling your gut to squeeze and push the food from the top to the bottom. And when you're under stress, that mechanism gets shut down. That mechanism uh, becomes dismantled, neurologically speaking. And so mechanical digestion or movement of the food through your GI tract is slowed down mechanically as a result of that stress. So these are just some very, very, again, very, very basic things, very, very basic elements that you can control very easy from a mechanical perspective. Now, we also have this, and we're going to draw it here, we're going to call chemical digestion. Now, chemical digestion includes a lot of things. As a matter of fact, I shot a video um, yesterday for you. If you haven't watched it, it's called Gut Function 101. You can, it's, it's, if you subscribe to us on YouTube, you can, you can tap into that. But it's a quick, it's a seven-minute video tutorial on the function of the gut. But the chemical digestion occurs as a result of enzyme action, enzyme action on food. So you have enzymes that begin in your mouth, like your saliva produces, your saliva produces an amylase, which begins the process of chemically breaking down food the second it hits your, your mouth. So that enzyme action is very, very important. So we have enzymes in the mouth that help break down carbohydrates to begin that process chemically of breaking those carbohydrates down. And once that food hits the stomach, we have more enzymes and one of them, a very, very important one, that helps us to break down our proteins is protease. Now, protease is very, very critical, especially when it comes to that right there, the meat sector. And what happens again, if we're talking about grains, especially gluten, remember that gluten damages the stomach, and the stomach is responsible for producing protease. So we get stomach damage occurring as a result of this exposure. We can hammer, we can damage our ability to chemically produce protease, which is what's important to break down our red meats. And when you're not breaking down meat, I can promise you one thing, constipation is on your horizon. So there's not just, we don't just stop though here. There's enzymes in the mouth, there's enzyme in the stomach, but then we also get, and there's another enzyme called pepsin, which is, um, very important for the digestion of proteins as well. So a lot of our protein digestion actually occurs in the stomach. And why is that a problem? Because if you're taking certain types of medications like antacids and other things, you're actually suppressing a lot of this activity. If you're taking drugs that damage the stomach lining, like aspirin or non anti-inflammatories, you can actually impact your stomach's ability to produce these things and then end up feeling or being backed up as a result of not being able to break those meats down properly. It's not that meat's bad for you, it's what you do be to your gut before you try to eat the meat that can really, really inhibit this process. So we need this chemical digestion to work. And then when we get to the small intestine, just below the stomach, this is where a lot of the rest of the enzymatic problems can occur. The small intestines produce a number of different digestive enzymes, amylase, is produced in the small intestine. There's, there are a number of others that are produced by the small intestine, including enzymes that help us to break down the very difficult to break down uh, dairy products. And then we also have not just the small intestines, but the pancreas as well that's responsible for producing elastase and amylase and lipase. Uh, these are all enzymes, again, that are secreted into the small intestine that help you mechanic or chemically rather break down your food, break it down into smaller parts. And it's, and it's as we break it down into smaller parts where we can begin the absorption process, taking the nutrients, taking the good, and of course, expelling the bad. So chemical digestion is very important. And again, a lot of people have damage that's gone on to their stomach, to their small intestine, whether it be through use of medications, whether it be through years of eating so poorly that they've damaged their GI tract now to a point where it doesn't matter what they put in their mouth, they're going to have trouble with digestion. 
and, and with constipation because they've damaged their gut's ability to do what it's supposed to do and then they're trying to continue to put it under pressure to do more. This is one of the reasons why fasting is such an effective strategy uh, in this regard and we'll get into strategies here in just a minute. I'm not going to leave you guys hanging but I do want to get through uh, some of these major major elements first. Let's talk next about the neurological component. The neurological component of digestion. Remember your gut is highly highly innervated meaning there are lots of nerves especially the vagus nerve that, that transmit the function of how you push that food from from your mouth from your esophagus all the way down and through that happens under a neurological guidance there's actually a condition medically called gastroparesis if you haven't heard of that I'll, I'll write it down for you gastroparesis a lot of people with gluten sensitivity their original symptoms aren't pain it's constipation it's not diarrhea. You know, a lot of times we hear that, you know, people with celiac disease, people with gluten issues should have diarrhea, not the opposite, which is constipation. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can have severe constipation with celiac disease. You can have severe constipation with gluten sensitivity. It can actually lead to neurological damage that causes a gastroparesis and can shut down the bowel function. Remember, the nerves are what propulse the food through. And if those nerves are being taken on damage or being deactivated because of other things, that can lead to a slowing down and a constipation as well. Now I mentioned something a minute ago. I mentioned this right here that stress is, is a big part of how it can impact your bowel function and one of the reasons why is that stress neurologically shuts down your gut. When you eat under stress or when you're stressed when you eat you, you actually are not shunting blood and the neurological message to your gut to do the work of digestion. You're telling your body, no, we're in danger. The last thing we need to worry about is digesting our food. We need to get the blood flow and the oxygen to the brain and to the muscles so that we can either run or fight, right? So we, we actually have a, a de-stimulation of the vagal nerve. The vagus nerve is the nerve that runs this system. And so when that nerve is being shut down because we're under traumatic chronic stress, and really that, that probably ought to say chronic stress because it's not like nobody has ever eaten under stress, but you just don't want to do it every day all the time. You want to take, this is where you want to sit down to eat and be calm when you're eating. Take away that stress factor so that you can activate the vagus nerve so that you can have neurological stimulation of peristalsis, which is going to help that food move through you more appropriately. So... Again, these are three big factors. We got one more. Let's change the color for you. And one of the other big factors is number four, it's your microbiome. And understand that those critters that live inside of you, those bacteria, those guys help you digest your food. They actually help make enzymes, help make vitamins, help you break down your food. Many of them will digest your fibers for you or digest aspects of your food producing other chemicals that aid in digestion, that aid in normal bowel flow and normal bowel function. There's a, a, a substance that your good bacteria produce. Uh, the name of that substance is called SCFA. That stands for short chain fatty acids. What these compounds are is when you eat fiber your good bacteria will take that fiber, break it down, and they'll poop out themselves. They'll poop out this substance right here, the short-chain fatty acid. This, then in turn, the short-chain fatty acid is fuel for your colon. So the cells in your colon require short-chain fatty acids for their fuel. They don't use glucose like the other cells in the body. They don't use glutamine like the small intestinal cells. They use short-chain fatty acids. So if you don't this is where fiber is an important part because fiber feeds your microbiome and you have to feed your microbiome to have healthy bowel motility from this perspective. So if we really break constipation down into four you know, very basic elements, it's the mechanical ability to break things down, it's the chemical ability to break things down, it's the neurological ability to move the muscles through, and it's your microbiome and the impact that your microbiome has on helping you digest the different foods. So all four of these are critical. Guess what? All four of these are also impacted and all four of these are also damaged as a result of long-term exposure to grains and gluten. So very important that you understand that because many people 
will never get this message. They're eating oats, oatmeal, oat cereal. They're eating other grain-based, whole grain products for fiber, right? They're trying to help this element right here, but the fiber source they're choosing it can actually create a disruption in all of these functions, even from the mechanical uh, aspect of the health of the teeth, right? And so there are studies now linking gluten sensitivity to causing decay of the tooth enamel, making it hard for your teeth to do their job and chew properly. So if your dentition or your, your, the health of your teeth is diminished, you're going to diminish your mechanical digestion. So again, these four elements are absolutely critical in order to make sure that the food substances come from your mouth or come into your mouth get broken down properly move through you and don't block you up don't back you up because it's that backup remember that it's not just bad or good things rather in your food you have bad things in your food too and the gut and the job of the gut is to separate the two but if you're chronically constipated and that, then all those toxins and all that garbage that's in your food right all that potential damaging stuff gets to stay there and it gets to irritate your gut lining and then it gets to leak through your gut lining and it gets to penetrate into your bloodstream and give your liver a hard time and then it gets to go systemic and create uh, create in inflammatory problems for the rest of your organs so it's very very important that the gut stays moving it's the number one rule if you any of you've ever done a detox program the number one rule of any detox program is don't get backed up when you're on the program because this is how you eliminate waste and this is how you take out the trash and so if this if this is not working you're in for deep deep trouble Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.